Hi folks, Astronomy Live here. No, the title's not a joke. Asteroid 2018, VP1, has a small chance to hit Earth on November 2nd of this year. But don't worry, even if it happens, it won't matter, because this asteroid's very small. It's just a few feet in diameter, so even if it hits, it will break up in the Earth's atmosphere, and it really doesn't pose a risk to people down below. It's a lot smaller than the one that hit Chelyabinsk. That one also broke up in the atmosphere, but it was large enough that it sent out a powerful shockwave that blew out windows throughout the town and injured a lot of people with flying glass. But this one's a lot smaller than that, so it's really not a risk. However, it's still a chance to learn about how we detect these asteroids and how we determine whether or not they're a risk to hit Earth. Right now, the computer is generating a series of orbital solutions by adding a little bit of Gaussian noise to each of the data points randomly and calculating the orbit, thereby calculating a series of orbital solutions that all fit very closely with the data. The data for this asteroid comes from the Minor Planet Center. We can see that 2018 VP1 was discovered on November 3rd at Palomar, and if we scroll down we can see the orbital elements, and we can also find the actual observational data. This is what you want to download if you want to calculate the orbit for yourself. So you can see all these observations here, the coordinates, the time, the apparent magnitude, and the observer. You can then download these data and load them into a program like FindOrb, which is what I used to generate all those orbital solutions. We can then take those orbital solutions into a solar system integration program and look at how the uncertainty region interacts with Earth at the time of closest approach. Here's an overhead view of the solar system as an output from my asteroid integrator, which was made using Python and Rebound. You can see the line of black dots, and as Earth passes through that region, you can see the lines of the orbits of the asteroid start to diverge. This is because, depending on exactly how close the asteroid gets to Earth, it will have a very different final orbit, and its position one orbit later can be radically different. So a small change in the initial state of the asteroid can result in a large change in the final state of the asteroid. This means that if the asteroid is not recovered by telescopes during this close approach, its orbit will be even more uncertain after this encounter. Here's a closer view one more time and at higher speed. The scale on the x and y axis is astronomical units. I also generated this 3D plot of the uncertainty region and the Earth-Moon system. The red dots are the Monte Carlo solutions of the asteroid's orbit, the blue dot is the Earth, and the green dot is the Moon. It's important to note that the size of the dots are not to scale, but their distances from each other are. Notice how large the uncertainty region is compared to the distance between the Earth and the Moon. This means that if we were trying to relocate the asteroid somewhere in this uncertainty region as it approaches Earth, we would have to be searching across a very large portion of the sky. Earth itself crosses through a very narrow portion of the uncertainty region, though. So if we focus on just the orbital solutions that correspond to an impact on Earth, we might have a much smaller portion of the sky to search if we want to rule out the possibility of impact. Also, we can focus on those impacts in order to plot them across the Earth's surface and determine where the impact region would be. Here's the resulting impact region. The higher the density of red dots, the more likely the impact would be in that region. And as you can see, that indicates that the impact, if it happened, would most likely be out over the Pacific Ocean, and there probably wouldn't even be any witnesses. However, it's possible, although unlikely, that it could happen over the west coast of North America or over Russia. However, those dots are far more sparse, making that impact scenario much less likely. Let's now take the impacting orbital solutions into the Free Planetarium program Carte du Ciel and see where the asteroid would have to be in the sky if it were going to impact Earth. Alright, so here we are in the planetarium software looking from Australia at the portion of the uncertainty region that corresponds to where the asteroid would be if it were on an impact course for Earth. You see this string of yellow dots here, each representing one of the potentially impacting orbits. Now, looking from Australia, we can see that the asteroid uh, uncertainty region here is only about a degree and a half wide. 
that's much more manageable than the entire uncertainty region. And we're looking from Australia because the declination of this region is quite low. In fact, it's below negative 30 degrees declination. This is because the asteroid is approaching us from below the ecliptic, and so it's easiest to see it from the southern hemisphere. Now, there are very powerful telescopes located on, in Australia on the itelescope.net network that you can rent time on and use to track asteroids as they fly by Earth. But unfortunately, they have an altitude limit over the horizon of about 20 degrees or more, and this region here is currently located about 15 degrees over the horizon. This is during twilight, it's not even fully dark yet, and this is about as early as you could hope to start to command one of those telescopes to point at where you expect the asteroid to be, but unfortunately it's already too low for that. In addition, the apparent magnitude of the asteroid is extremely low as well, it's extremely dim. Uh, the higher the number, the more dim the object in the astronomical magnitude scale. And we're dealing here with a predicted magnitude of about 27. That's on par with some of the farthest objects ever observed by amateur astronomers. In fact, one of the eye telescopes in Australia holds multiple world records for the farthest object ever observed by amateur astronomers, and it was hitting about that magnitude. But it was doing so using very long exposures over a long period of time to be able to collect enough light. And unfortunately, that just isn't possible here. We're dealing here with a situation where the uh, predicted position of the asteroid will be setting very quickly, and it's very low over the horizon, making it very difficult to observe something that dim. So that's a real problem. But does that mean that all of this effort was for nothing? Not necessarily, because it turns out there's already starting to be quite a number of false claims being made about this asteroid on YouTube. There are headlines popping up with things like uh, the asteroid will be 300 miles from Earth at closest approach. Well, we already have established that it might actually be zero miles from Earth at closest approach, but that's not really a concern because it's a small little asteroid, only six, about six feet wide. However, another claim I've seen pop up from a video channel that claims to be a local CBS station, but sure doesn't look like one to me, uh, claims that the asteroid's actually six miles wide. Maybe that was an honest mistake, but if somebody starts running with that, it could induce a lot of undue fear, because obviously an asteroid six miles wide is going to cause a lot more damage than one that's only six feet wide. Now, it turns out that I've put in an additional asteroid here consistent with the trajectories of these other uh, potential positions of the asteroid, but I've set the the absolute magnitude to be consistent with one that is about six miles wide. And what you can see is that this close to impact, it would be magnitude 9.4. That's a lot brighter and changes the situation because pretty much any amateur telescope is going to be able to reveal that. And if you've got a CCD camera and a telescope, you could easily detect that in just a few seconds of exposure. So although the altitude's still too low for a telescope, other amateurs in Australia could definitely see it. In fact, because it's so large, if it were observed earlier in the year, it would be even higher over the horizon, and therefore we might be able to still detect it even well before impact, if that were really the case. I don't expect that it is the case. It's supposed to be just a six foot wide asteroid or thereabouts, and all the data points to that being true. My own calculations based on the apparent magnitudes given in the data we originally downloaded from the Minor Planet Center is consistent with an asteroid that small. But of course, I'm sure somebody's going to say, well, maybe they're lying. Maybe they're covering up the fact that this is actually a gigantic doomsday asteroid. Well, again, we can rule that out very easily thanks to these data. We can go back in time and look at where it would, it would be right now as it's approaching Earth and how bright it would be and whether we should be able to detect it. So let's go back a couple months. and Go back, let's say, another week to get even closer to the current time and take another look. So at this point, that, that predicted magnitude is still about 13.6. That is still easily within range of amateur telescopes equipped with CCD cameras. Even my telescope could pick this up very easily. And the telescopes on the iTelescope network could pick it up easily as well. And at this point, because it's earlier in the year, in Australia, it'll be even darker at this hour, even at the same hour of the day. So you, you're not even dealing with twilight. and the positions here are much higher over the horizon. We're now dealing with something that's over 50 degrees above the horizon, easily observable to those telescopes. And because these predicted positions are now further away from Earth, 
that region is now smaller as well. We're dealing now with a region that's only about three quarters of a degree wide. So that's very easily canvassed by some of those telescopes. Now, as for the asteroid's actual size and its expected magnitude, we're dealing with something that at this distance would be in excess of magnitude 30, which is incredibly dim. Even your typical professional observatory is not really going to be able to detect it at that point. So that's why we're not able to see the asteroid right now and check whether or not it's actually on an impact course, because in reality it is a very small asteroid and we can only see it when it's very close to Earth. This is also another example of an asteroid that is approaching us from a direction that is too close to the sun in the sky, which is why it's so low on the horizon, even at twilight, shortly before impact. So it's not really practical to observe it prior to impact. The only reason we know about it is because it was discovered two years ago when it flew by Earth and flew very close, so that professional observatories were able to pick it up. But at its current distance, it's not really practical even with most professional observatories. So that's why they're not able to perform this kind of observation right now. But if it actually were six miles wide or some other significant size like that, then even an amateur telescope could pick it up at this distance. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to book some time on one of the telescopes in Australia and canvas this whole area to rule out the possibility that it's actually a miles wide asteroid that's on an impact course and for some reason they're covering it up and pretending that it's actually a much smaller asteroid. I'll upload those images at a later date once I get them. But I've been working on this video for quite a few days now and since videos are already starting to pop up about this asteroid I wanted to go ahead and get this first part out. So let's now talk about what some of those other videos are showing. Let's talk about what NASA shows on their website and some of the publicly available tools that other people are misusing in their videos. So as you can see, you can find information about this asteroid on JPL's website at the JPL Small Body Database browser. But let me talk for a moment about something I see a lot of other YouTubers doing, not just with this asteroid but others as well, but this is a perfect example of why you shouldn't do it. I see a lot of other YouTubers using this orbit viewer to show the encounter with Earth and talk about the Earth distance of the asteroid, because it does show it down here at the bottom. However, there's a very important disclaimer directly above this orbit viewer, and people ignore this all the time. It says, this orbit viewer was implemented using two-body methods, and hence should not be used for determining accurate long-term trajectories over several years or decades. or planetary encounter circumstances. They even put that part in bold to try to draw your eye to it, and yet I see people ignore this all the time. What does this mean? Well, two-body methods means that the asteroid's trajectory is being calculated as if the only two objects in the solar system are the Sun and the asteroid. It's ignoring the gravity of Earth, the gravity of all the other planets. This is why I used a specific asteroid integrator that accounts for the gravity of the planets and Earth and calculating the trajectory of the asteroid. You have to do that to get accurate information. This is just a quick look viewer. It's very easy to run. It doesn't take up much processing power to run, so it can just run in your browser at a very high frame rate, as you can see. But it's not intended to show you planetary encounter circumstances. They specifically tell you not to use it for that purpose. And yet people do this all the time. And they will look at how the asteroid's going to intersect with Earth based on what this says. And yet it says right up at the top, don't use it for that purpose. And people ignore it. People do that anyway. So if you come here to November 2nd, yeah, the Earth distance is very small. but it's not going to give you the full picture. It's not going to give you uh, the range of uncertainty, okay? It's not showing the region of uncertainty of this asteroid, and it's not including the gravity of Earth or the other planets on the asteroid. So the information it's giving you is not at all accurate. So if I fast forward this orbit viewer to the point where the asteroid is shown as being closest to the Earth, the minimum distance shown is 2.71 times 10 to the negative third astronomical units. This is just a little bit further from the Earth than the Moon. But that's not the true situation, is it? We already know 
that because of the uncertainty region, it could be many times further away from the Earth and the Moon, or it could even hit the Earth. We don't know. And this orbit viewer is not going to give you that information. Now, if you scroll down and click Close Approach Data, you'll see a table with fine text that does show you accurate information. And down here, it shows on November 2nd that there is a close encounter with the Earth. The time uncertainty is over three days long, so we don't know exactly when the close encounter is going to occur. It's going to depend on where it is in the uncertainty region. We see the nominal distance uh, from Earth is about uh, 0.0028 astronomical units, about what you see on the orbit viewer, uh, very similar. And the minimum close approach distance is 3.9 times 10 to the negative fifth astronomical units. Now that's a whole different story. That distance is less than the radius of Earth. The results you see in this video take into account the gravity of all the planets on the asteroid's trajectory. The initial orbital solutions were generated in find orb and include all the planets as sources of perturbation. These results were then analyzed in Python using rebound and a solar system integration was performed once again, including the gravity of all the planets and even the moon in determining their effect on the asteroid's trajectory and visualizing the region of uncertainty. I then wrote a second program to project the potential impacts on the Earth and isolate those orbital trajectories so that they can be analyzed by other planetarium software. The source code to that program is in the video description. Although the asteroid's tiny size and trajectory make it hard to observe prior to impact, I will be able to rule out a much larger asteroid on this trajectory heading to Earth. So until then, clear skies, folks.